However and wherever in the world steel is made, production relies on a steady stream of incoming iron. Without iron coming in, there can be no steel coming out. Ironically, this simple fact puts steelmakers at the forefront of the recycling movement. By supplementing or replacing traditional iron mill feed with recycled scrap steel, steel producers can drastically reduce both their costs and their impact on the environment. Because scrap steel has already run the mine-to-mill circuit, it requires much less processing than iron ore. This translates not only to cost savings for steelmakers, but can reduce their energy usage by more than 60%, slag production by 35%, wastewater production by 72%, and CO2, CO3, and SO2 emissions by as much as 86%. And those numbers are good for everyone. But while scrap steel is an essential ingredient of the steel industry, global supply chains of all types of scrap remain broken or unreliable. Because the natural life cycle for steel products ranges from 10 to 40 years, scrap supplies cannot be scaled in tandem with steel production. This puts steel makers under extraordinary pressure. When economies dip into recession, there is a corresponding dip in scrap supply. When production and manufacturing are down, supplies of mill scrap and prime scrap from industrial offcuts, the purest form of scrap steel, become scarce. Consumers buy fewer new products and recycle fewer old cars and appliances, so obsolete scrap supplies dry up as well. And even when economies improve, the lag between supply and demand for scrap steel can last up to a decade. As a result, the majority of steelmaking countries ban the export of scrap steel to protect their domestic steelmaking and manufacturing industries. Sound policy, but bad news for markets like China, Southeast Asia, and India, where new middle-class economies aren't far enough along the path of urbanization to produce enough scrap to feed their exploding steel industries. And with China alone producing over 44% of the world's steel, could we be headed for a global shortage? Not quite. Introducing hot briquetted iron, or HBI. A necessity is the mother of invention metallics product and the standard bearer of the new iron age. HBI is an excellent supplement for scrap steel and costs steelmakers at least 15% less than prime scrap. HBI supplies are scalable to steel product manufacturing levels, are portable and storable, and are not embargoed for export. HBI is a form of direct reduced iron the high temperature reduction and compaction process is designed to concentrate the relatively low level of pure iron found in raw iron ore into a much more efficient steel raw material. Unbriquetted DRI, also known as sponge iron, is often produced by integrated steel mills for use only on site. It is not suitable for transport or export as it is unstable and prone to spontaneous ignition causing explosion in boxcars and in the hulls of ships. HBI, on the other hand, is stable, safe, and portable, and can be handled and stored like scrap steel. Iron ore mines can concentrate their ore into HBI in reduction plants on site, and the concentrated metal can then be used directly in basic oxygen furnaces or lower emission electric arc furnaces without further refinement. Merchant HBI, produced just for trade and transport, is a hot commodity priced just below scrap, but at least 300% higher than iron ore. Raw ore varies in grade and composition, while HBI offers 90 to 94% total iron content and guaranteed chemistry, the gold standard for steelmakers. By the year 2020, the global scrap metal shortage is estimated to reach epic proportions. Not surprisingly, global demand for HBI is estimated to increase by 200% or 120 million tons annually over this same period. China's five-year plan dictates the installation of 10,000 kilometers of rail and 24 mass transit systems, pushing scrap import forecasts beyond a 100% increase, while at the same time requiring a 21% reduction in energy consumption per unit of domestic industrial output. This insatiable demand for steel is seen right across China and Southeast Asia, driven largely by the estimated one million people becoming urbanized there every week. But China and Southeast Asia produce virtually no HBI. India, the region's largest producer, 
consumes 100% of its DRI and HBI domestically. America, the world's third largest producer of steel, where there is renewed commitment to steelmaking and manufacturing, produces no merchant HBI, but instead imports from Venezuela and Trinidad. Enter the Northern Iron Corp Griffith Mine, an HBI production facility, scheduled to open in 2016. Located close to the Great Lakes area steelmaking industry, where 60% of North America's steel is produced, and with a direct rail line to the Pacific Gateway to Asia, Northern Iron is at the vanguard of the new Iron Age. 